Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the concept of process switching and process scheduling. So let's start with the process switching. Process switching means if there are multiple processes running in a system, then there may be a chance that one process needs to preempt the processor and another process can get the processor for the execution. So switching from one process to another in a system requires saving the state of the old process and loading the saved state for the new process. Because the uh, process switching keeps on going in a continuous manner, so we have to save the state of the process in the process control block that we have studied in the previous lecture. So we save the state of the process in the PCB and whenever that process needs to be executed again, we load that particular saved state from the PCB. So now let's see with the help of a diagram that how this process switching actually works. So for that we are going to take two processes. One is suppose process 0 and another is process 1. So this is process P0 and this is process P1. And we are uh, assuming that process P1 has already saved its, its state in PCB1. Okay. So now see. Let us assume that process P0 is executing here. So process P0 is actually executing up till this point. And after this point, process P0 needs to be put in an ideal state. So what we will do? We will save this particular state in the PCB of process P0. So we are going to save the state of process P0 in PCB0. So write save state in PCB0. So that is the say state for process P0. Then after some time is passed, process P1 decided that or the system decided that process P1 needs to be executed. So at that point we will reload the state, reload state from the PCB of process P1. So reload state from PCB1. So the state is reloaded and process P1 again starts executing. Suppose the process P1 executes up till this point. So here process P1 is executing. Now again after this point, suppose some interruption occurs and process P1 again goes in the ideal state. So we have to save the state. So at this point, we are saving the state of process P1 in PCB1. So let us now assume again that PC uh, process P0 exist, uh, need, will go for execution. So reload state from PCB0. and execute the process P0. So from now to this process P0 is again executing. So that is how the process switching works. This particular uh, stage at this time from this to this, these processes are ideal. So you can write ideal here also and from this to this particular moment process P0 is also in ideal phase. Now whenever a process is put in the say state of PCB there is some type of interruption or we can call it as the system call. So right here interrupt or system call. Similarly you have to write 
here also because we are saving the state in the PCB. So here also interrupt or system call is occurring for this particular line. So this is your process switching diagram. Next topic for this video lecture is process scheduling. Now we have this uh, we have seen that how process switches from uh, execution to ideal state. Now uh, there is, is some kind of scheduling algorithms which is used to pick a process from the ready to the executing phase. So that uh, the job is done by process scheduling. So it is used to switch CPU among the processes. Now there are different kind of scheduling queues. One is job queue, then we have ready queue and device queue. So all the processes when they enter into the system, they are put in the job queue. So we can also say that job queue contains all the processes in the system. So they contains all the processes in the system. Now the processes that are residing in the main memory and are waiting to execute are kept in a list which is called as ready queue. So ready queue contains the processes that are in the main memory and ready to be executed. And these queues are generally uh, implemented in the form of link list. So these queues both job queue, ready queue and device queue also are implemented using link list. So this is this is about the job queue and ready queue. Now we have also the device queue the meaning of device queue is there are certain uh, processes that are waiting for particular IO device for the execution. So the list of processes that are waiting for a particular IO device is put in the device queue. So in this you can write it contains list of processes waiting for a particular IO device. So these are the three different kind of uh, scheduling queues that you need to study. So in this uh, you can mark this important points that the job queue contains all the processes Whereas ready queue contains the processes that are in the main memory and ready to be executed. Whereas device queue contains a list of processes waiting for a particular IO device. So this is about the scheduling queues. Now let us see the concept of schedulers. A process migrates among the various scheduling queues throughout its lifetime. We have already seen different kind of scheduling queues. Like for example, if a process is created for the first time, then the process is put in the job queue. When the process is ready for execution, then the process is shift from the job queue to the ready queue. And during execution, if the process is waiting for a particular IO device, then the process is put in the device queue. So we can say that the process migrates among various scheduling queues throughout its lifetime. Then the operating system must select for scheduling purpose process from these queues. Now the OS, the system has to select some of the processes from these queues and that selection process is carried out by a process which is called as scheduler. 
तो शेड्यूलर इज अ प्रोसेस दैट सिलेक्ट्स द प्रोसेसिस फ्रॉम द क्यू फॉर द एग्जीक्यूशन पर्पस नाउ देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ शेड्यूलर वन इज लॉन्ग टर्म शेड्यूलर देन वी हैव शॉर्ट टर्म शेड्यूलर एंड वन इज मीडियम टर्म शेड्यूलर ऑल्सो सो वट इज अ लॉन्ग टर्म शेड्यूलर लॉन्ग टर्म शेड्यूलर इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज द जॉब शेड्यूलर it is also called as job scheduler and it selects the process from the pool and loads them in the memory for execution so basically a long term scheduler selects the processes from the pool now pool can be interpreted as the job queue because all the processes are part of a pool and this uh, list of all the processes are present in the job queue so a long term scheduler or a job scheduler selects processes from the pool and loads them in the loads them into main memory for execution so this is your long term scheduler then we have the short term scheduler or also called as cpu scheduler this particular scheduler long uh, short term scheduler selects the processes selects the processes from a pool that contains all processes that are waiting to be executed so this is your short term scheduler so if i want to uh, explain this with the help of a diagram then you can think it like this suppose this is the pool that contains all the processes suppose we have these many processes in this pool and this is our memory and this is the cpu now from these many processes some processes are select and put in the memory suppose these three processes are selected and put in this memory and this selection is done with the help of long term scheduler now from these uh, three processes if the cpu selects only this process for the execution then this task is done with the help of short term scheduler so that is how you can uh, remember the concept of long term and short term so this is about the uh, long term and short term scheduler then we have also one medium term scheduler now medium term scheduler is used to remove process from memory so that we can reduce the degree of multi programming and later the process which is removed from the memory can be introduced again in the memory and it its execution can be continued from the position where it is left off so if there are n number of processes running we can select some of those processes and swap out those processes from the memory so that the degree of multi programming can be reduced and after some time 
we can reintroduce that process in the memory or in the system from the same state from where it is taken out so that uh, task is done with the help of medium term scheduler so we can uh, show this with the help of a diagram so once i will draw the diagram i will come back to the video again so this is the diagram that you can use to explain medium term scheduler in this a process that is running in the cpu can be swap out at this particular point can be swap out and put in a block which is which contains partially executed swap out processes now from these processes medium term scheduler select the processes and again put them in the ready queue which from which short term scheduler selects the processes to execute but the beauty of this medium term scheduler is that the process again starts with the same stage at which it is swap out so this point is basically swap in so this is the medium term scheduler thank you for watching the video please subscribe to my youtube channel for more tutorials on operating system and other computer related subjects thank you